Last part about this is constructing a PCO curve. Now, what is a PCO curve? So, uh, remember what, what P is, right? So P is, is stands for the power of, right? So P is actually not just for PH, it's actually a general function. It just means the um, negative log base 10 of something, right? So P of X means the negative ba base 10 of X. So the P of chlorine, you, you can really imagine it's just a function written like this, right? Is this a negative log base 10 of chlorine? So we can actually construct a PCL curve for our titration. The easiest way to do this is with an example. So let's have a crack. So let's have a go at constructing the PCL curve for this question. So let's kind of draw the setup. So we have our AgNO3 up here, and we have our burette with our potassium. The potassium is just a spectator ion, only the chlorine is going to do anything. So the potassium doesn't even matter, we can just rub it out. Okay, so what's the curve going to look like? We're going to have PCL, and we're going to have a volume of AgNO3 added. So just given this information, we can already begin to calculate exactly, um, you know, what it kind of, what's it's going to kind of look like, right? So, so there's a several key points that we need to kind of uh, go through. So there's a, a few key points. We have number one is a starting point. So, you know, I haven't done anything. I haven't added any uh, silver nitrate in. It's just original, right? And then we're going to have equivalence point. So what is going to be the um, concentration of chlorine once I've added in, a, once, once I've fully neutralized all of the uh, chlorine. Uh, or, or, yeah. And then finally, um, a third point, uh, maybe let's say double equivalence point. This is arbitrary, um, so it doesn't need to be like exactly double, but just something after equivalence point is good. So let's get let's let's have a go at some of these, um, starting off with the starting point. So how do we figure out the starting point PCL? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to figure out what the initial concentration of um, chlorine is initially. And thankfully, this is actually pretty easy because it's, it's basically just given to us 0 0.15 molar. So we put this into the log function. Um, so therefore, PCO is going to equal the negative log base 10 of 0 0.15, which would give us 0 0.82. So let's plot this on um, here. Let's, um, well, uh, yeah. One. That's going to be our initial PCL. Nice. Okay, let's find my equivalence point now. This one's a little bit more tricky, right? So first, we need to find out when does equivalence point occur. At which volume does it occur at? But thankfully, it's not too hard if we have a look at the equation, right? So we're going to have AgNO3 plus KCl, giving us AgCl plus KNO3 aqueous. Of course, this doesn't actually matter because KNO3 is fully soluble. Doesn't, no one cares about it, right? Um, so how much do we need to add? So we can find out how many moles of the KCL we really have. Um, CV 0.15 times. It's going to give me 0.0. .0 Um, and then, so if we do, so therefore, moles of silver is equal to 0 0.0045 moles. So 
So therefore, I can say that the concentration of silver. Oh, sorry, sorry, yes. Yeah, um, which so therefore mole is equal to CV for the, uh, my silver, right? So my zero point zero zero four five is equal to the concentration, which is given as zero point one times my volume. So my volume is equal to. 0 0.045 liters or 45 milliliters. So I'll put that here. Alright. Is that 45 milli? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have drawn a dot. 45 milliliters. We want to figure out what the concentration of my chlorine is at 45 milliliters. Um, and the way that we can do this is just using a bit of good old KSP, right? So we've actually done this calculation at the very start of this video. Um, um, so I've I just got it again, and you can see how we've got our answer of this. So we can see that our that therefore our concentration of chlorine is equal to 1.34 times n to negative 5 and therefore our PCL minus is going to be negative log base 10 of 1.34 times n to negative 5 which is going to be 4.87 okay so let's pop that onto our chart here right so here's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. So we're going to have something around 4.87 around there. Now, of course, you could do this for like 10 mils and 20 mils and 30 mils and like 40 mils. Um, if you actually did this, you'd see that it has a kind of like a normal titration graph shape where it kind of starts off slow and then slopes up, spikes. Um, you can do that in your own time. Uh, let's just try any other, other arbitrary point. It really is arbitrary. Let's say, oh, I don't know, 60, right? It's completely just a number I pulled out of my bottom. Uh, could be any number. <clears throat> okay. So um, let's think, have a think about the, the, uh, the, uh, concent the, the concentration of chlorine when I have 60 milliliters of when I've added 60 milliliters of my silver nitrate. So when I'm at, so this is a bit of an interesting question. It really comes kind of down to a more of a, um, so it really comes down to more of a question about uh, common ion effect, right? So uh, if we have a think about this, we have um, the KSP equation here. So when we were at equivalence point, the, 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 the silver and the chlorine were exactly matched together. But now when we have 60 milliliters, um, we're going to have an excess of one thing and, a, and, and so we're going to have some common ion effect going on, right? So what, let's have a think about at 60 milliliters, what is going to be the you know concentration of my silver, right? So, um, so Let's have a think about that, right? So, uh, moles of silver is equal to, sorry, sorry, yeah, moles is CV is equal to 0 0.1 times 0 0.06, right? That is in, yeah. Which is going to give me 0 0.006 moles. Fantastic. Now, you might think, okay, and then I simply divide by the volume of 60 milliliters. That is not going to be the final volume, though. Why is that? So the total volume is actually equal to 60 milliliters that we, that we added. But there was an original volume, right? There was an original 30 milliliters of the uh, KCL. So our total volume is actually... The plus the original amount, which is equal to 90. So, we, so our total volume is actually 90 milliliters. So my concentration of silver is actually moles by volume is actually 0 0.006 divided by 0 0.09. And that gives me 0 0.067 molar, right? That is my concentration of silver. Now, let me sub this back into my KSP equation. 
this number is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 9. I hope. Uh, let me check that. No, it's 10. I can't remember. Bad memory. This is going to be um, 0 0.067 times the concentration of chlorine. So the concentration of chlorine that I have is going to equal to. Two point six nine times ten to the power of negative nine molar. So my PCL is going to be look at that eight point five seven. Okay, so let's put that onto here on, onto my diagram eight point five seven maybe around here. Right, and that is the general shape of my PCL curve. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time where we go through also um, Volhard and Farjan's method. I'll see you soon. We offer physics, chemistry and math tutoring. For more insightful explanations like this one, head to tutorgum.com.